During his tenure at the helm of private equity firm Bain Capital, after repeatedly touting his business experience as an asset towards reviving the U.S. economy, the former Massachusetts governor has been put on the defensive by Bain workers who are fighting back against the outsourcing of their jobs. 170 workers at a Sensata Technologies plant in Freeport, Illinois, of which Bain is the majority owner, are calling on Romney to help save their jobs from being shipped to China. The plant manufacturer sensed and controls that are used in aircraft and automobiles, but has been dismantling and shipping the plant to China piece by piece, even as it requires the workers to train personally their Chinese replacements, who have been flown in by management. The workers in Illinois say their petition of 35,000 signatures, as well as their multiple visits to Romney's headquarters, have fallen on deaf ears. So they're taking their plea straight to Romney here at the Republican National Convention. Two of them are joining us now in our Tampa studio uh, here at W. EDU, uh, PBS TV in Tampa. Tom Gorup is with us and Cheryl Randecker. Both worked at Sensata for 33 years, were told their jobs would be terminated by year's end. Tom and Cheryl, welcome to Democracy Now! Tom, Thank let's you. start with you. Tell us what's happened. Well, um, when they took over the plant, they told us. Who is they? Uh, Sensata Technologies. When they took over the plant. Well, who is it owned by? Both? It was owned by Honeywell, and they sold the automotive business to Sensata Technologies, and they brought us into a meeting and they said, all the jobs are being moved to China by the end of 2012. And they have, since that happened, they have slowly started to move this equipment out. And these areas which were full of equipment and full of people working very hard on this highly technical equipment is now empty space where the only indication there was ever anything there is the discoloration of the floor. Wait, uh, Cheryl, how did you find out who even bought your plant? It was owned by Honeywell. You're making these sensors for General Motors, for GM. And then what happened? We actually um, found out, we all went home and looked up Sensata, and we found out in December that it was owned by Bain. And then we found the, the connection between Bain and Governor Romney. And that just spurred a little bit of emotion that we wanted to stand up and fight back and take, take a stand for the American people and for our jobs. Now, you first heard that Honeywell was being bought, that your plant was being bought. When you were actually in China training your replacements, the company sent you to China? Actually, I was in China for Honeywell's moving their lines, and then I was over there in June of 2010, and they said the automotive line had been sold. When we got back, you to learned Freeport, in China. I in China. When we got back to Freeport. We asked the managers at that time if this was true. No, this is not true. October, the end of October of that same year, they announced that they were being uh, the automotive line was being sold to China or to Sensata and was been, probably be moved. So now you were chain, training your replacements in China, and then uh, the Chinese, some of the Chinese workers came to the plant to be trained here as well in the United States? The workers that I trained in China were for Honeywell. The workers that we trained here in the States at this last uh, group of people were the Sensata workers. How did that feel to be training your replacement? Knowing that you're going to be completely out of a job and there's no hope for any job in our area, it was gut-wrenching because you don't know where the next point is going to be. I mean, we're 52 years old. Where, what are we going to do? So within three weeks, or not three weeks, three months, my life is going to change as I know it. Hmm. And to start over at this point in my life is extremely scary. But you don't blame the Chinese workers. I don't blame the workers so as much as I blame the governments of both countries. Hmm. Tom, taking this issue um, to Mitt Romney, how have you done it? Where have you raised your voice? Well, the first thing we did was the employees signed an open letter to Mitt Romney urging him to come to Freeport and to help save our jobs. Now, at locate Freeport, Illinois. Freeport, for Illinois is about uh, two hours west of Chicago and about uh, 20 miles south of the Wisconsin border. So it's really in the northwestern corner of the area of Illinois, and the economy there is, is really bad. So um, after we 
wrote the open letter. We did petition drives to congressmen. We did a petition drive to, which was delivered to the Bain Capital headquarters in uh, Evanston, Illinois. And uh, we attempted to bring the le open letter to the Romney campaign headquarters after they repeatedly said that they were unaware of the situation. At every stop when we had to ha tried to have contact with them, they locked us out of the building. At the one campaign headquarters outside of Madison, Wisconsin, they called the police on us. So then we tried to ratchet it up, and we actually went to a Romney event, campaign event, in Bentendorf, Iowa, where we politely asked him to come to Freeport, Illinois, and help save our jobs. And our response there was we were also forcibly removed from there. So we decided to ratchet up even more, and that's why we're here. Talk about the supporters of Mitt Romney when you come to events where he is, what their response is to well, you. you know, we're there trying to save our jobs, and we were called communists for trying to save our jobs from going to China from the United States. We were, we were called communists. Um, they, if, if there hadn't been a, a large police group in there, I'm sure we, we would have been more threatened. Um, they start this USA chant. It's like, yes, we're all, we're all for the USA, too. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to keep well-paying manufacturing jobs from being moved out of this country to China. And, and they make it sound like we're not patriotic. And it, it boggles the mind yes. as to what they're thinking. Yesterday, when I was talking to you in Romneyville, you said, uh, as they called the workers communists, you asked uh, why they're sending yeah. your jobs to communist yeah. China. You know, and one of the things that really bothered some of us was that about a month before, was less than that, a couple of weeks before they brought the Chinese workers in, they physically removed the American flag that hung outside the plant, and the week after the Chinese workers left, they put it back up, like they were afraid they were offending somebody, you know? And it's, it's like, I'm sorry, but this offends us. This offends 170 people who are having their jobs moved to China only to increase the bottom line, because, you know, these products have always been profitable, and it's just not enough. But Cheryl, Mitt Romney doesn't work for Bain anymore. So why is this his responsibility? Uh, Mitt Romney created the model of outsourcing jobs. He created Bain, so therefore it is his responsibility. And he is still reaping very high benefits from Bain in the financial end of it. So he can pick up the phone and call his buddies and say, we need to stop this practice and keep the U.S. jobs here and good paying jobs, not the lower paying jobs. Have either of you spoken with other workers laid off by Bain-owned companies? Yes, we, we've had contact with some of them when we're down here. Here? Yes. And what are your plans here at the Republican National well, Convention? Well, actually— You were in that march in the afternoon, the yes. unpermitted march. Interestingly, it was led by Sherry Honkala, uh, who is a well-known anti-poverty activist, who happens to be now the Green Party vice presidential candidate. Joe Biden right. didn't show up here, though he was going to, right. the vice president and vice presidential candidate, but Sherry did. Yeah. Um, we're actually going back today, so we're not going to be here for any, any more— I think we're doing an event today, but then after that, we're actually going back home. Um, we feel like one of the things that's come out of this, besides getting our message out, is we've had an opportunity to meet a lot of people who are dealing with this issue as well, you know, with, with whether it be outsourcing or whether it be people that work for Bain that are making very low wages, you know, and then the, it's all part of this corporate view that anybody can do anything and you don't need to reimburse them for it. What do you say to um, Mitt Romney, uh, who doesn't tout his time as governor of Massachusetts, but his time as a business executive to bring us out of an economic recession, some say depression now? Well, what I would say to him is I think he should be ashamed of what they're doing because they're destroying our American dream to increase their profits. Well, Cheryl? 
I would have to say, look at, take a look at what you're doing, get in touch with the American people. You created this model, you're taking good jobs away, and you're saying you can replace them with the lower paying jobs, and how are people supposed to get by? I want to thank you so much for being with us, uh, Cheryl Randecker and Tom Galrath. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Bain workers now, but yep. uh, not for not long. In a few months. No. That does it for our broadcast. By the way, I'll be speaking this Friday at noon in Sarasota, Friday night in St. Petersburg at the Palladium Theater, Saturday night in Cable, uh, Coral Gables in Miami, Sunday night in Charlotte, where we'll begin to cover the Democratic National Convention. You can check our website for the 100 City Tour at Democracy Now.